Innovelli just shipped their brand new Matter Over Thread on-off switch with humidity sensing. I've installed it and I've been using it for about a week now. But I knew exactly what I was going to do with the switch because earlier this year, in one of my very first videos, I installed the Innovelli fan switch along with the RE temperature and humidity sensor to automate our bathroom fan. And I noted that this was an expensive solution for a seemingly basic task. And at the end of the video, I say that one day there will be an option with one device alone. Well, that day is today. So today, we are automating our bathroom fan. Again. I'm Patrick Hunt, and I want you to like smart home tech as much as I do. Real solutions with Matter, Apple Home, and a little creativity. Weekly, I'll show you how small upgrades can make a big difference. Welcome. This is actually a great opportunity for me to report back on the original setup in the bathroom that we've been using for about seven months now. It's gonna provide some great context for the video. And as we get more into the automation side of the project, I am happy to have a new installment in my Smart Home Logic series. I originally did this install in the winter. So in Apple Home, I created an automation to turn the fan on once the humidity crossed 45%. Because at that time in our house, the humidity sat around 40% and would cross 45% pretty quickly once the shower started. And here's what I learned. The automation with this setup was perfect, down to the placement of that RE temperature sensor, which was right above the shower. I liked that I could put it basically right in the action. The exhaust fan would turn on minutes into a shower and I had it auto shut off around 30 minutes later. However, as we got into the spring, I noticed that the fan would turn on at random times throughout the day. So I checked the humidity and noticed that the base humidity was actually sitting closer to 45% as the weather changed. So I bumped up that threshold to 50%, and then again to 55% in the early summer. And then one day, the fan just never turned on again, because the humidity was always sitting above that 55% threshold, and I hadn't kept up with updating it. And then the temperature sensor battery died and stayed dead for like three weeks. So with all that considered, is this a setup that we'd say works? Maybe in a geographic location that doesn't see all the seasons, but I don't live in a place where people are walking around saying, yeah, but it's a dry heat. It's a wet heat. So let's fix it. And we're gonna start with the automation. I wanted to revisit this automation logically and see what I could build to try to remove some of those variables. So what are we trying to solve for with this automation? Starting the fan when the shower starts. And one thing is true about a shower, no matter what time of year it is there's gonna be a rapid rise in humidity over a short period of time. So whether that baseline humidity is 40% or 60%, I want the fan to turn on when the humidity rises, say 8% in a three minute time period. If it takes longer than three minutes to rise 8%, then that should be ignored because that's not a shower and it's likely just the changing of the season. I'm very sorry to say that this automation cannot be created in Apple Home. And that was even using convert to shortcut and controller for HomeKit. It was painful to hit a roadblock at every turn. I recently set up the Homey Pro in my house to remove some of those proprietary hubs. And maybe if I had time, I would create some advanced automations. And what's happened? I haven't removed a single one of those hubs. But I've been having a ton of fun playing with these automations, so whatever. I guess I added another hub to my house by accident. Anyway, here's my genius advanced flow that completely solved all of my humidity threshold problems. First, we need to create two variables using the Better Logic Library app. We get more options than the native homey variables offer. First is for previous humidity. This could be three minutes ago, five minutes ago. You'll need to dial it in. The type is number, and you can put any number here. It'll be auto-updated later. The second variable is for the rapid rise delta, and we can start this at zero. Now we're gonna create an advanced flow. The way flows work, those cards to the left, which branch out to the right, those are when cards. They're used as automation triggers. Every three minutes, we want the current humidity to be reported back to that previous humidity variable. That's what that first flow is. The trigger for the second flow is when the humidity changed. And it's this trigger that makes the automation possible in Homey, but not in Apple Home. Apple Home is fixed to thresholds, where this is the humidity just changing at all. The humidity is ever changing. So we'll put it in action. Set our delta variable to the current humidity minus whatever it was three minutes ago. That's the variable that we just made that is updating every three minutes. Now we're gonna put in some and cards. These are conditions. If that rapid rise delta is greater than 8%, 
So if in a three minute period, the humidity has risen over 8%, then we're going to turn the fan on with a then card and start a 30 minute timer as well. In that last flow, we just have the fan turning off when the timer finishes. You might have noticed another then card. This card is sending me notifications from Homey as an accompanying action from the rapid rise delta. I wanted to use this for debugging and refining. The notification sends me the current humidity, what it was three minutes ago, and the difference. 8% was a pretty safe spot to avoid any naturally drifting humidity readings, but I wanted to know if I could lower it at all to turn the fan on faster. So I created an early notification at 3% rise. It would tell me what the humidity rose to over 3%. Okay, so what happened? In several showers, the same thing happened every time. I turned the shower on and a few minutes later, I received my early notification, a 5% rise in humidity over a three minute time span. Then soon after the second notification crossing 8% and the fan turned on, but most importantly, no false triggers. This told me that I could remove my early notification and change my Delta trigger to 5% to turn the fan on sooner and still have some buffer. So we solved the automation issue and I wish I could have done it in Apple Home, but the Homey Pro is my new favorite toy, which by the way, the Homey Pro Mini is half the price and it does support both Matter and Thread and Zigbee. Now let's solve the battery issue. I love battery products because they're discreet and they can be tucked away in convenient places, but battery life is always a consideration. And as mentioned before, this is an expensive solution with two devices. The new Innovelli on-off humidity sensing switch is $67.50. This is the white series, so it's matter over thread. There's also a blue series Zigbee version. In Apple Home, this comes in as a plug because it uses a relay to completely kill the power to the load, but you can change it to show as a fan. Additionally, it exposes three configurable buttons, the humidity sensor, a temperature sensor, and the LED bar. Homey also reports some other information. This switch requires a neutral wire, whereas previous Innovelli switches haven't. I can also do some fun LED animations with this switch in Homey. I also went ahead and replaced that old GE Sync switch with an Innovelli dimmer while I was in the box. I think it looks much nicer now that they're both the same. Installation was quick, except for when I had to uninstall the switch to put the neutral wire in, given that I did not read the directions first. I come back to Innovelli switches every time because they've been flawless. I placed my pre-order for this switch without even a second thought. After installation, I went to my Homey Flow and changed out all the cards to reference this humidity sensor instead of the RE humidity sensor, and then this new on-off switch instead of the old fan switch. The first thing that happened is that my early notification was sent. There was a 3% rise in humidity, and then not long after, a 4% rise in humidity. Okay, maybe the humidity sensor is still calibrating to the room or something. And then hours later, it was happening over and over again. Days later, and I was constantly getting that early notification of the humidity rising, sometimes as high as 6% in a three minute time span with absolutely no showers happening around those times. So I went to the Insight Trends app. First is the RE humidity over the course of three hours. There is an upward trend, but it's also a very smooth line. Then we have the Innovelli humidity sensor over that same time period. It has that same upward trend but it's extremely jagged, going up and down by several percentages pretty frequently. There are a ton of factors that could be contributing to this, even just sampling more frequently, but it makes creating a simple automation a little tough. I did some digging and found some Innovelli comments dating back to November of last year, saying that this humidity sensor will not be extremely accurate. But for the problem we're trying to solve with this product, you don't need extremely accurate humidity. You just need to be able to show a change in humidity. And I do completely agree in this case, although it would be great to have both. This isn't a major problem for platforms like Homey or Home Assistant where you can create those advanced automations, but let's see how you could approach this in Apple Home. First, you'll still be using that fixed threshold, which again, you might need to revisit as seasons change. Take a look at the humidity sensor and decide on a base humidity, meaning no recent shower. Even if it's jumpy, it returns to roughly the same place. We're just coming out of summer, so ours is hovering around 65%. Let's say when the humidity rises above 72%, then convert to shortcut and we'll remove that action. We're going to add in a wait of 30 seconds, which you might need to increase later. I'll come back to that. Then we're going to get the state of the humidity sensor, add an if block below it. If the humidity is still above 72% at that point, then turn on the fan. 
Otherwise, do nothing. The idea here is to try to ignore those quick jumpy data points with that 30 second wait. You could also forego the convert to shortcut altogether and just set your threshold pretty high, but still within that shower range. It's gonna take a little bit longer for the fan to turn on, but you'll be safe from those false triggers. So where does that leave us? I expected this Inavelli humidity sensor to perform the same as the Ari humidity sensor. And although it doesn't, that doesn't exactly mean that it's a deal breaker. I don't often look at my humidity sensor for any reason whatsoever. So as long as it's reporting back changes in humidity, it's doing its job. On the one hand, I'm happy to have solved the multi-device automation issue, the battery issue, and the price issue, but I have taken a few steps back on the automation side, which will likely still require some refining. I just added a condition that the bathroom lights must also be on before the fan will be triggered to turn on. In this regard, this does not beat the placement and accuracy of that RE temperature and humidity sensor. The humidity reading from that sensor never fluctuated. The Innovelli single device solution for automating your bathroom fan is going to be more affordable and seemingly more logical for most people, but is going to require more problem solving on the automation side. The RE sensor and fan switch solution could cost a bit more depending on the switch set you choose, and you will have a battery to consider, but the humidity is going to be extremely accurate and require fewer automation tricks, whether you're in Apple Home, Homey, or Home Assistant. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.